Alrighty guys, we're back for the Great Ninja Escape. And this is a ninja build based on getaway car and I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. <laughs> a lot of ways to bring creatures back to your hand and then hopefully uh, use them again with their um, ninjutsu ability, right? So for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well. So I hope that sounds fun to you guys. Now, after we go over the deck, we're just going to hit up some normal play mode. I do think this is the kind of deck that you're just going to want to have fun with and, um, and not worry too much about winning, right? But it might be really good. I actually don't know. I haven't tested it yet. So for anyone who is wondering, this is one of the... Um, one of the decks I put together from the suggestions from the community brew a couple Sundays ago. And this was the one where we dropped Lagrella and we went into uh, Ninjas and into Network uh, Disruptor as well. So this is a deck based off of your guys' suggestions. So I thought I'd let you know that, right? What do we got here? We got 4,000 Faced Shadows. Just a great card that Ninjutsu. That ninjutsu is insane. Being able to copy stuff like silver fur just gets the job done. <laughs> we got four network disruptors. So whenever it enters, you tap target uh, permanent. It doesn't say tap up to, so you always got to select something to tap, but it could also just be one of your tapped lands if worse comes to worse, right? <laughs> this is a great card to uh, bounce back with getaway car and probably one of the main suggestions that you guys had on that Lagrella uh, video. We have a couple march of the swirling mists here because it's just an amazing card it can slow down the opponent or it can help you get your damage through and it could just straight up win the game if there's a locked down board state right so we have four moon circuit hackers here as well the ninjutsu on this being able to uh bounce back like a thousand face shadow so turn one shadow uh turn two bounce it back when you're swinging in the air right Get this down, get two damage through, draw a card. It's so valuable on so many levels, right? Four Suspicious Stowaways, being able to slip through unblocked is important in this deck, and this is a really good one. If it ever gets to nighttime, this is just nasty. Also, filtering through our cards is pretty good when it is daytime, too. Two Acquisitions Experts. So not only is this a rogue that works with the Silver Furred Master, but... Uh, it also has an ETB where you get to uh, discard a card from your opponent's hand. Well, they in this deck in particular, they reveal one card and you select whatever they reveal and it gets discarded, right? So it's essentially like they get to choose what's discarded. Regardless, this works great with, of course, getaway car. You get to bounce it back potentially, play it again, and try to dig through your opponent's hand even further, right? So we have four silver for masters for the aggressive side of this ninjas and rogues get plus one plus one and ninjutsu abilities you activate cost one less to activate so this really pieces the deck together there are going to be some awkward moments with this card where it's the only one that's actually getting through to the opponent's face and you don't necessarily want to bounce this back for a ninjutsu ability uh, and so there will be some awkward plays with it, but overall, I think it's going to be worth it in the build. Four Prosperous Thieves, no surprise here. Uh, probably the best ninjutsu creature because it, uh, because that ramp is so valuable and just getting this down on turn two is insane, right? Two mana, three, two is no joke and it ramps you. Very nice. So we have two Biting Palm Ninjas, another way to reach into the opponent's hand, and this one actually lets us choose, which is really good, right? And then if we ever bounce this back with like a getaway car, and we can do that all over again, and of course, all of the ninjas and everything else, we can bounce back to our hand off of the ninjutsu abilities as well. So um, yeah, that's, that's something to consider, right? Getaway car is just an extra way to bounce stuff back, but ninjutsu itself can do that exact same thing. So a getaway car is a three drop artifact vehicle that I've been playing a lot of recently because it's actually just pretty darn good. Whenever getaway car attacks or blocks return up to one target creature that crewed it this turn to its owner's hand. So one thing that it doesn't do is it's not like a rogue vehicle. <laughs> and so it doesn't get the buff off of silver fur. But overall, that's fine because it's a 4-3-3 drop with haste and it does a ton of stuff here. The best cards to bounce back with this are probably Network Disruptor and the uh, Acquisitions Expert. But pretty much anything else is pretty decent too. Um, 
You don't necessarily want to bounce back a stowaway, but you could still crew this up since the crew is only one. The options here are limitless with getaway car, right? So, um, yeah, even like a thousand face shadow bouncing that back to your hand so you can ninjutsu it later is pretty darn good. It's it's kind of like just consider getaway car just like an extra ninja with ninjutsu, right? So a card that might not be expected here and a card that we see in mid-range builds instead we don't see it often reservoir kraken four drop six six trample ward two guys this is an aggressive creature this is a top end for an aggro deck and all we ever see it in is um yeah the mid-range builds right and i'm shocked by that but now that i'm finally getting to play an aggro deck that has blue I had to try Kraken. If the opponent can't tap this down, this is nasty, dude. This is a crazy card, but then guess what? If it, they do tap it down, you get little fishies that can't be blocked. They can't be blocked, guys. Now, they're just tokens, so yeah, if you ninjutsu with them, the tokens die, but that's still really good. And then you can corrupt the getaway car with those, too, if you already have a bunch of other creatures that uh, you don't that you want to attack in with instead. So I think Reservoir Kraken is going to be really good here. Now in the mana base, we have Hall of the Storm Giant, Soaring City. We have a Hive, an Abandoned Mire, and our Dual Lands, and very, very few uh, black sources here because there's not too many black cards overall. It's mostly blue. So uh, yeah, that's it. No honorable mentions this time around. And let's go ahead and take this into some normal play mode and see how it does. Buddy, for some reason it's been very difficult for me to uh, navigate these menus. Of course we have to click off of uh, alchemy play mode every time, but still... Okay. I don't mind this hand. No turn one does suck, but I just... It's not a terrible hand, I'd say. What do you guys think? Just having creatures is nice. That's a good thing. And having the mana to play those creatures. <laughs> that's enough to convince me personally, so... Opponent? Are you there, buddy? Opponent, wake up! Wake up, opponent! I have a video to shoot! <laughs> well, I'm gonna lean back and relax. So how, how are you guys doing today? Everyone doing good? Oh, there we go. Okay, keep seven. Alright, let's see here. Let's see what we got. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, here we go. Opponent uh, was thinking seven turns ahead, so I understand. The Spicious Stowaway is a great draw there. Very great draw. We might go right into the Biting Palm Ninja off the Stowaway if it doesn't get hit by a Spike Field or another uh, removal. Gold Hound, let's go. Let's go, buddy. Probably my most played red card from New Capenna so far. Probably. <laughs> Agnes. Agnes. Oh no, this is... This is a scary setup that the opponent has so far. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reach into their hand, I think. But there's... Ah, oh, man. We have a lot of cards, dude. All right. Fighting Paul Ninja it is. Hopefully it doesn't look too aggressive over here with the hasty cards. <laughs> Take action. What do you got? Ooh. Oh no. Okay, Raiju's gotta go. <laughs> that's a that's a nope. <laughs> Cause if they uh, yeah, they didn't even need to draw land. They had the treasure token for the Raiju. Oh no, guys. Yep, yep. Uh Royal Eruption. Rabbit battery. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't blitz out the requisitioner there. They want to equip this in case we have a meat hook. We could be running meat hook in this deck. We don't have a double black, but I personally... No. Agnes is at three already, and it's not like we could uh, do much there anyways, so... Okay, well, disruptor. And, um... 
and stowaway, I guess, is fine. Yeah, opponent's board is looking pretty scary, and our hand is, like, getting worse and worse as time goes on <laughs> somehow. So, um, blitz this out, man. Blitz that for sure. That's what I would do. A couple extra treasures, and you get that draw. Heck yeah. Now you can equip the battery to the charger, too. Give it haste. So you get the extra... I love this, man. I love it. Um... Let's take five. Either way, the requisitioner is going to die. I'd rather just uh, block there, keep stowaway in case there's something that we wanted to do. But this is not looking terrific for us, guys. So we do got the double black here. Um, that, that, that's kind of it, man. That's kind of it, isn't it? Could draw. I don't know if that ramp is just better. Let's go with the draw here. See what we get. Yeah, the problem with the ninjutsu decks is you need to actually have creatures on the board already, right? And so we're going to have to chump block next turn, so we're going to get everything down. But if we can somehow survive here, like the opponent has so much mana from Agnes, very scary. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can chump here and see if we just die to a royal eruption. Because if we had to double chump anyways, then it... Okay, okay. Uh, March of the Swirling Mist is big for us here. So we're going to play this out on blue. Um, we can't get that damage through safely. So... Let's think about going. The hive is okay. There's a, there's a lot of options here because we could bounce thousand faced, get a uh, prosperous thief down, then go thousand faced, uh, bounce the moon circuit, and then copy the prosperous thief. And it's a good chunk of damage. It's just not doing it. It's just not doing it for us, you know. So I think it's gonna be. Save extra mana, right? So we're going to swing here. Prosperous Thief. Right? So that way I can actually... Um, that way I can actually hold the March of the Swirling Mist open and still get another blocker down. Or one, two, and then we... Uh, yeah. Then we discard... Or we exile the Moon Circuit Hacker for two. So we want to do this before they swing on their, uh, wait, wait, stop on their first main phase, right? So they're going to reconfigure to get over top of that. Yep. So no other creature is pretty good news for us. So March and it's going to be X is two moon circuit. One, two, pay one. March of the swirling mist is huge. Let's see if we can get there, guys. Thousand Faced Shadow. Um, we don't have the damage, do we? One, two. Wait, we have 11 damage on the board with Hive. <laughs> that is heartbreaking. We could still go Hive. We could get two treasure tokens and get two chump blockers down. They j the problem is they could just kill the chump blockers. I'm doing it, guys. This is potentially really risky. The importance of March of the Swirling Mist. How about it? Um. Yeah, let's do it. Another thousand faced. <laughs> That's fine. Couple chump blockers. And hope that they uh, don't just draw a royal eruption, right? See, if we drew, like, another march there, that would have been... That probably would have been GG. So, only having two march is definitely something to think about. I think it's a quip Fireblade Charger, but either way, a swing here doesn't do it because of our chump blockers. And so Hive probably just gets in. 
So they want to unattach it and then they can get two through at least, which is going to be the charger and one of the batteries. Bunch of treasure. Block, block. And that that's that, guys. GG. I was not expecting to uh to get that victory, but the March of the Swirling Mist just so happens to be very powerful. GG opponent. That was awesome, buddy. Uh I yeah, their deck was very aggressive. Unfortunately, they were probably looking for a card that actually could use that treasure, right? They probably had a professional face breaker in there or something along those lines. So that was pretty sick though. That was uh that was a good one. And it, it really showcased early on how important it is to get those early creatures down to actually do your ninjutsu and stuff. And then it also showcased like how important it is just to cast out your ninjas sometimes too, you know, instead of like being super greedy with them and, and keeping your ninjutsu back. Yeah, I'd say that was a, a solid first match, and I, I wasn't very confident there, but the deck does have pretty explosive uh, damage capabilities, so. Even though we don't have a black source, I think this is keepable. There's not, like I said, there's not too many uh, black cards in the deck. And yeah, if we get a, a prosperous thief, then it just so happens to be pretty darn good. This is most likely the new Boros build over Mono White. We've been seeing less Mono White and more Boros, and so if they have Burn, I really don't want them to hit my Thousand Face Shadow uh, this early on. In the meantime, like, yeah, so they might just choose to hit Face instead. Probably play with Fire. Since they didn't go uh, Creature, it's probably play with Fire. And Play With Fire hits Prosperous Thief pretty darn hard here, guys. So we want them to target something else first is the thing. Moon Circuit might be able to get through successfully, and then we could Thousand Face Shadow too. Let's attempt it. Any damage that we don't take to our face is pretty good as well. They're thinking, do we, do we just kill this now so they can't just ninjutsu something? I would say no, they want to kill whatever we're trying to ninjutsu. If they know what deck we're running, of course. Generally speaking, a network disruptor is is in a deck like this, so. Hopefully we get to see that getaway car too. So play with fire, yep, yep. And now we can go ahead and can just go ahead and recast the network disruptor, honestly. That's fine. They have the option to tap that for mana, which is what's holding this up, probably. I think I think they have the option right now. Okay. Well, uh, third mana wouldn't be a bad thing to draw here. Um, of course, a black source, so we could try the Biting Palm Ninja would be really good. Yeah, they keep it all open. Okay, so I, that's, this isn't terrible. It really isn't. So we're going to attempt the swing. And I'm pretty sure Prosperous Thief is going to bite the dust here too. <laughs> but I want to try it. I want to try to get that treasure through. Since they already used one play with fire, it's a similar concept to where if they do end up killing this, at least it's not hitting our face. Right? So. Okay. It's definitely sticking, so it's uh, probably a play with fire. And, and these Boros builds are... The, I love that they're around right now because they're relatively predictable, so they're easy to play against. They're really powerful, don't get me wrong. They're, they're tough and they win often. Uh, but at least it's a deck that you can like say, okay, well, they have this many cards and it's probably this, right? That's why I never, I, I don't mind like mono white and when mono white was like a huge thing and stuff. I just never, just never minded it, you know? 
Um, but I also love that Boros is around because it's Boros, man, and I freaking love it. Yep, so second play with fire is out. So very, like I said, very predictable, but network disruptors coming back down. <laughs> well, at some point, at some point, they're going to run out of burn, right? Well, no, not necessarily because of uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary. It's going to be a Luminarch. Keep the red open in case they have a third play with fire, because we don't know. They might, right? Definitely on to the Luminarch here. Yeah, because next turn, they, they can set up for late value since we're kind of really slow right now, uh, if that makes sense. So Thousand Face Shadow needs extra creatures to be on the board to be good. So we're just going to kind of get everything through here. And yeah, I'm, I'm crazy enough to swing in with the Disruptor because I don't necessarily want to chump block with that. Because what I want to do is go ahead and, and copy a bunch. Mm, take one of the stowaways. That's pretty bad for us. That's definitely pretty bad. Um, not seeing the black source has been very punishing here. So that's something to consider. Something to consider for... Okay, okay, that's good. Biting Palm can finally do something, but so can Thousand Face Shadow here. But I think it's going to be Biting Palm. We need to grab whatever extra removal they have. Um, so we're going to swing. Biting Palm. Bounce uh, Disruptor back. I still think we can we can do this. We might have to block. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, Royal Eruption hits the Biting Palm, but at least again, at least it's not face. Commando's rough, but Bloodthirsty Adversary's even rougher, probably. Right? Yeah. I don't know. We could have hit the Royal Eruption too. I think it was Adversary. I don't know. What would you guys have grabbed there? Uh, discard a card. I guess one of the Thousand Faced. I guess, right? Yeah, if they hit our Biting Palm... If they hit our Biting Palm with the Royal Eruption, then we don't... Again, we don't have any good target for the Thousand Faced Shadow. But, like... I don't know. It's not looking terrific for us regardless. Okay, good. With their one red source, they chose Kumano over the removal. Mainly, probably mainly because they have so much damage swinging through here. Um, at this point, we probably... We probably just chump the biggest. So we could have prevented the swing from the Cathar by playing the Thousand Faced, but I got pretty greedy. Have one block. We're we're dead. <laughs> we're just like we're super dead, so let's have fun with it, right? We'll go uh swing on in. We can actually No we can't. Yeah, we just don't have enough here. So we bounce this back. We get to recast it as a uh chump blocker, but remove the menace counter, right? Uh take action, get rid of the royal eruption this time. Okay, I mean, technically, yeah, they just haste the uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary out, and that's game. But it it was kind of closer than you would expect, right? And I think this is another match that showcases how important March of the Swirling Mist is, where if we had a March, maybe we just would have won here, right? Maybe there would have been uh, something, a, a, a line of play to get through that. Very tough match. That is a top of the meta Boros deck, um, but I I do enjoy actually playing against those Boros builds for a lot of reasons actually. Because one, now you guys let me know your opinions uh, on these Boros builds. One, I think they're pretty fair. Like they're powerful, but they feel fair. Does that make sense? So I I just don't mind playing against them at all. And then yeah, of course, like I said, it's it's nice to know what's in the opponent's deck. Because for a while there, when New Capenna dropped, it felt like the meta was just like, in a like constantly shifting, and so con like you'd constantly be like, oh, I I know what's in the opponent's deck, uh, but actually no, you had no idea what the opponent 
was actually playing, <laughs> which ends up being very tough, you know? Okay. Hey, we go first here. This isn't bad. This isn't bad, then. I don't mind this one bit. All. It'd be nice to have a one drop, but we only have eight one drops in the deck, and so I understand uh, not getting them out, you know? Go right into silver fur. Um, I think, like, it's a... Like, if we go Moon Circuit, we could surprise them with Silver Fur next turn and get more damage, but... Okay, Thieving Skydiver. Okay. Could go one. I mean, they definitely block here, right? Yeah, they definitely block. Definite trade. So how do we how do we get around that then? Because we could march for march for one, and then go moon circuit, bounce the silver uh, back. But I don't think that's the I don't think that's the correct play. Would be a uh, prosperous too. I think that was a I think that was very smart from the opponent <laughs> to get something that trades with the silver fur right away. What do you guys think? I, I'm pretty sure that's why they played that right away. Like, nope, I'm not going to let you uh, keep that or swing with it for that matter. Okay. Wizard class. Okay. Interesting. So another silver fur. Um, that is actually big, isn't it? I don't think it's going to hit the board, though, is the problem. So we can attempt the other moon circuit first and see if they see if they counter this instead. Come on. Oh crap, it hits. Oh crap. Okay. Well, I'm still going to try it. Let's do it. <laughs> see what you could do? See regardless. Yeah, make disappear. Yep. That makes a bit more sense, doesn't it? Nice. Okay, so a trade into the uh, Moon Circuit is better than the Silver Fur. So I apologize if I don't play this one out well. I still have no idea how to play against Mono Blue Tempo. <laughs> like, it's so hard to play against, guys. It's like, what do we play? What order do we play them? Like, how do we do this? Who am I? <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and swing on in and get the Prosperous Thief down, bounce the Moon Circuit, and we could, I think it's more damage over Moon Circuit's ability, right? Yeah, I think so, more more damage, and while they're tapped, we're gonna go ahead, get this out, we have March for one, but we could also exile the other March for three, which could be huge for us. Depending on what's going on here, it's not like they're running board wipes or anything, so. We'll see, we'll see. Um, March for one. Commit zero. That's pretty big for us. That's pretty big protection. Uh, getaway car. Do we want to reuse one of these abilities? Yeah. Moon Circuit's ability is pretty good to use here. So that could be pretty good. At least we get to see Getaway Car, right? Bounce that back. Now do we want to use it? <laughs> That's the real question. No, I think we want to keep March of the Swirling Mist open. Down to four. March of the Swirling Mist is pretty good here. Because we only have to march for two to protect both of these, but then also Getaway Car is uh, is very tough for the opponent to deal with. Uh, they gain two. We can march their Circuit Mender, though. I like the opponent's deck. I like the opponent's deck a lot, actually. So, I don't think... 
we do march? I don't think so. Uh, Biting Palm Ninja. Okay. So, this is pretty good. See, anything we do, if we march for one now, we might lose our creatures. So I think it's just better to let them block here. Right? Mm-hmm. So, um, Biting Palm is four damage still because of the Silver Fur, and we get to peer into the opponent's hand. So I don't mind this at all. Even though bouncing the getaway seems weird, it's the same amount of damage. And we get to uh, grab something from the opponent's hand, so. Uh, and as a ninja, we get that treasure off the thief too, so. They draw, treasure, take action. Let's see what we can grab here. Oh, oh. Oh my, okay, uh, let's do Mordenkainen, or however we pronounce this, right? Seems like something that we don't want to deal with right now, honestly. We have two open mana. I think we just keep March open, right? Yeah, I think we just keep March of the Swirling Mist open here. Yeah, GG opponent. I was trying to think, like, what could they do? But, um, yeah, we got there. Let's go, guys. A sweet deck so far. Take the victories with a grain of salt, though, because we're not in ranked. I always say it. It's a different ball game over there in ranked. It seems like a really fun deck to play, though, so far. Maybe a little bit complex in the sense that, um, like, you... It's, it's kind of tough where, how do I explain this, right? Like when to ninjutsu, what to bounce back. Like there's, there's kind of a lot of stuff to think about while playing the deck. Already though, March of the Swirling Mist seems way too important. So we might want to bump that up to three. That's something we'll talk about in the final thoughts for sure. Pretty good line of play. Turn 1,000 face, turn 2, uh, Blitz in the... Yeah, Blitz, listen to me. Um, ninjutsu in the, the Thief, but we could also go for a uh, Silver Fur Master, too. We could just outright cast it. Sure. Why not, right? It doesn't seem bad. Especially when we're going for that extra damage here. Going first was pretty big. If it's like Infernal Grasp, they want to wait for our turn. Power Word Kill. Okay. Okay. I can, uh, I can respect that line of play for sure. So the question here is, do we go for... The three off the thief. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> because we get to go ahead. We can keep March open, but I don't think... I think we're pretty safe here. We still have March open off the treasure, actually, so... Could just go Disruptor and bounce it with Car too. Okay, why not? <laughs> Let's go greed, man. We've been we've been doing pretty good. So like I I like going greed here. It looks like a very powerful board. Meat hook for one doesn't do it, so power word kill. Okay. The Kraken. Let's go. I hope we get to see that. I hope we get to see that this game since we don't have the treasure now. Get a Disruptor back to hand, because now a Meat Hook for two could be devastating. But then also being able to tap something down could be good, too. Oh, they were looking for a green source. Oh, okay. Another getaway car. If we had one more mana... Oh, GG opponent. 
I'm surprised they uh, conceded there, actually. I, I think that could have been anyone's game. I guess maybe maybe they're on a time crunch and they thought that we had enough value already, but that was a surprise. If we had one more mana, then yeah, we, we were it was looking pretty good for us. But we didn't have that one mana, so I don't know. Let's go uh, one more game. The matches here seem pretty fast. Try to showcase one more. It's a pretty fun deck, though, guys. It really is. I think that getaway cars and and like it's one of those in, like things i didn't even think to add it into like a ninja build because one ninjas already bounce themselves pretty well but it it seems to work right it's just such an aggressive card in and of itself too so turn two prosperous thief is crazy come on let's see the crack in this game right Ooh, okay silver fur Swing for two might be better. It might be. Okay, I'm gonna try it, even though they're rocking. Even though they're rocking swamps over there, and we know that there's gonna be spot removal somewhere in the build. Um I like getting silver fur down, you know? Okay, there's the mana for the Kraken. No opponent! Come back, opponent! Come back! No! Ah, oh, man, this would have been a perfect game to show why I think the Kraken is so aggressive. <laughs> because there's going to be times where the opponent just can't tap it down, and it's just a big, chunky 4-drop. And then I think it pairs well with ninjas, too. But I already talked about that um, when we went over the deck, so... Well, let's try to get one more match in, then. 80% uh, win rate over here in normal play mode. <laughs> Not too shabby guys not too bad at all um let's see if we can get another fast one in hopefully we get to see kraken right i really want to prove a point it makes sense that it's in mid-range builds it does but i i, I really do think that it, it belongs somewhere on the top end of an aggro deck the problem is aggro decks with blue are, are hard to run and so or are hard to make i should say we want to turn one or a promised turn two probably promised turn two i think that's better what do you guys think well we would have gotten there anyways but probably just play this out on blue and go suspicious stowaway uh actually the disruptor and the thousand face might have been better play both of them out and because now if they fading hope this yeah Darn it. <laughs> that with the Fading Hope, it, it sets us back an extra turn to start the, ninju the ninjutsu process, right? So. Hmm. Hmm. Opponent rocking ramp. Ooh, this could be fun. This could be a fun game, guys. Okay. Um, let's go get this down, right? Stow away. And we're going to actually go Thousand Face Shadow here instead of the Disruptor because we might have to tap something down. I don't know if they have flying, but next turn we have enough mana to tap something and then get the uh, Prosperous Thief through once one of these uh, hits through, right? Like if they play a flyer, we, we got to make sure we tap it down to get the Thousand Face through because we don't necessarily want to bounce the Stowaway back to hand. Yeah, you can cheese that damage through this time, buddy. Okay, now all we got to do is draw the Kraken. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. We're going to go full swing. Start with the Prosperous Thief, Bounce Thousand Faced. Just have one open. Couple, couple ninjas coming at your face. Treasure token. Draw a card. Um, suspicious stowaway. Right? I think so. We want to make sure that we can slip through uh, or unblocked. So we can uh, ninjutsu thousand face down and get an extra prosperous thief. Opponent has a ton 
ton of available mana here with Taxidermist and yeah, right into Cultivator. They get they get more ramp, so we gotta be ready for a serpent to hit the board here very soon. If a serpent hits the board, it's probably the opponent's, right? But that's the problem with ramp. You gotta see your top end too, so we'll see. We'll see, won't we? Uh, root Coil Creeper. Nice. Nice. An underplayed ramp card. We, we played this card a little while back, I think. I definitely had it in a deck. Oh, it was, I say a little while, it was a long while, pretty much like uh, when Midnight Hunt came out, so. Getaway card's pretty spicy. We get this down on black, but it's also safe to just play on blue. Okay. A tough decision because getting Moon Circuit, uh, a Moon Circuit Hacker uh, so Cultivator hits the car, can tap it though. So let's go Disruptor, tap Cultivator, right? Car, car for aggro, network Disruptor, uh, full swing, bounce back, tap Cultivator next turn too, hopefully. So they could double block the car, but then we have a ton of stuff slipping through. So they decide that the thief is worth it. Okay, we get five damage through here. I don't mind this at all. They get, they don't gain life from the innkeeper anymore. Uh, we still get the treasure. We still get the uh, draw here. All the storm giants could be really good. I'm going to discard the suspicious stowaway. Um, and then probably... Probably drop the disruptor now. They know we have the thousand face shadow. Alright, let's see what happens here. Man, maybe that was too greedy of an attack because they still had great blocks. Very good blocks from the opponent. Very uh very thought through. Yep, there's the serpent, guys. Oh no. Um so they could swing there quite confidently, yes. They sure can. So my turn, they get a 3-3. Okay, Hall of the Storm Giants needs to come down now. See, that's the problem. They can end up just like tapping down the Hall too. How do we get through here, guys? How do we get through? The Suspicious Stowaway is gonna break through regardless. We could go Thousand Face Shadow, copy the Disruptor. I don't think, I think if we copy the car, it just hits as a vehicle, right? So, I think it's a full swing. <laughs> this is awkward, man. This is very awkward. I'm going to try the Thousand Face Shadow, as, as bad as it seems. Um, because we might be able to hit something here, like a March or something. Yeah, we lost a lot in those blocks, so the, the opponent definitely had really good blocks. I just don't know how we get past that Serpent. I really don't. This is a lot of damage coming in next turn, too. 13. 13 damage. Okay, we go, yep, and then, oh, uh, Biting Palm would have been really good earlier to to get that uh, Serpent out of their hand. Um, Abandoned Mire, okay. Well, at least we drew the Biting Palm, and I'm actually gonna keep this for next turn, try to tap down the Serpent. And hope that they don't just have three damage here. <laughs> That's possible too, right? So, a switch is to nighttime. Oh, the, yeah, because I didn't actually cast anything. That's funny, actually. Because ninjutsu doesn't count as uh, casting. You just hit it onto the board. 
I didn't really think about that. I should have went over that in the uh, intro. Primal adversary. Oh. Oh, wait. Does that does that land get haste? Oh, okay. Okay, they're tapped. Woo. Woo. That could have been bad. That These look really awkward with this artwork. Look at them. Uh, that doesn't actually show, but you see it on the board there. Really weird. Okay, we are close to death. They still have blockers here, and they can sacrifice serpents to tap down our creatures before we even get to attack with them. So I'm pretty sure this is the opponent's. Um, we have just enough mana to power up Hall, then they can tap it down, right? Um, we could go Disruptor and try. Let's see what happens, because they have enough serpents to just tap our whole board. We'll see what they end up doing though. Like we might actually be able to swing in before they before they have any other options. We're definitely gonna power up the car since Disruptor can't swing here anyways. Easy trade into the uh, Serpent though. This goes unblocked. They really wanna tap these down before I swing. They really, really do. Especially with the uh, with the tapped serpent here. I'm still I'm still playing this through. I think this. Uh, I think if they don't tap everything down here, then we have a we have a chance. But I I think as soon as the serpent hit, technically it was the opponent's right. Yeah, hitting the uh, hitting that is pretty important, and then also. Okay, they don't tap these down. So how do we want to do this? So we want to go with... We want to start with... Fighting Palm Ninja. Wait, one, two, three. No, 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 no. We want to start with... Prosperous Thief. Bounce the Thousand Face Shadow. And then... We Thousand Face Shadow. Bounce the token, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get there, guys. We didn't get there, but we really showcased a lot of power in the deck. And unfortunately, yeah, they ended up getting the Serpent down before we were able to get that extra damage through. And so, yeah, wow. Really good game, opponent. Really fun one. Good game, buddy. Yeah, uh, I think I think Coma Cosmo Serpent. I'm surprised we don't see it more often. I really am. I'll let them play this out because we're tapped out. Like, they can swing. They can get their quest done. It's no big deal, even though we're almost 50 minutes in. <laughs> I think... It'll be fast for me uh, in the final thoughts. There's not too much to think about overall. 66 total win rate out of uh, six matches. Pretty darn good. Pretty spicy. And that one was really close too. So yeah, I think the final thoughts are going to be easy because we've seen ninja builds before, right? And these ninja builds, one, they are kind of hard to play. You always need like extra creatures down, which I think is another reason why Reservoir Kraken would be pretty good. We just didn't get to see it today, right? I think Getaway Car fits this deck beautifully. That being said, there are so many other ways to bounce creatures back here that you might be able to just get away with two of these and then go up a March of the Swirling Mist and maybe m removal. <laughs> Uh, right now, March is the only removal in the deck because we're focused on kind of just sliding by the creatures or tapping them down, and we're not too concerned otherwise. Um, so, like, dropping a couple getaway cars, going up a March and up an Infernal Grasp, or something along those lines, just simple spot removal, might be pretty solid. That being said, if you plan on, like, taking this into Ranked or something, there are a ton of control decks in Ranked, and so simple spot removal might not be enough and you might just want to go up to four march of the swirling mists also getaway car like don't get me wrong going down to two might not be the answer here because it is pretty darn good in the deck especially paired with network disruptor uh or even just as simple as pairing it with the fishies off the kraken 
So you might want to find room somewhere else, maybe if you don't have all the Thousand Face Shadows or, or another rare or something like that. I do think March is going to be very, very, very important though. So, all right, guys. Hey, if you made it this far into the video, y'all are champions and I super duper appreciate you and I will see you in the next video.